Welcome to episode 26 of Take Your Points. I'm your host, Ronan Scott. This week, we're continuing our series of looking at great Ulster teams of the past few years. And it's the turn of Ballandary Shamrock's 2001-2002 team, who won the All-Ireland title. I've asked a few of the players to give me their stories from that season. I wanted to hear how they achieved that incredible success. Maybe a lot of people don't don't realise this, given given the, the sort of the level of continued success that that our club had over maybe a forty year period. Ballandary is a very very small rural parish uh, on the on the Derry Trone border, and um, you know if all the, the parishes and all the, the clubs in Derry, we would be we would be one of the, the smallest pick ways, you know. So we were really have been and, and, and certainly were that year punching above our, our weight uh, in terms of population and, and what have you. I suppose the expectation for that season was we lost previously in two county finals to Balahi. They were going for three or three in a row maybe at that stage and it was a case of would we be good enough to beat Balahi on a, on a given day. Um, so that was ultimately what the season was going to be all about. Could we win a championship? The start of the 2001 season, season coincided with foot and mouth in the Ballandary area, which really impinged on our, our pre-season training. The attitude at the start of the year was that we would go one step further. We'd, we'd gone close in the previous two seasons, been pipped by Balahi, and this year we were determined to bring John McLaughlin home. As I said, because of foot and mouth, we didn't get onto the field until mid to late April, and uh, in those days the championship started early. The competition in Derry, and it's still the same you know, presently, was was massive. Um, to give you an, an indication, there were ourselves and Balahi going out at hammer and tong every, every year. You know, both teams littered with fantastic players. Um, you had a, a, a young loop team emerging as well, um, who would go on and win an Ulster club themselves. You had a, a Dungiven team that were on their day, could beat anybody, and, and were Ulster club champions uh, four or five years previous, and you had you had a lobby team that were were still littered with fantastic players. Um, so on any given Sunday, your level of competition that you were at was absolutely massive. I suppose Belahi knew that we would be the team most likely to stop them, and and we knew if we were going to do anything, like we had to had to be that Belahi team um, at some point. Damien Barton had been our manager for the previous three years and had been had been very unlucky actually, uh, as I said, getting beaten early in two county finals. Brian McIver came in who had taken a lot of members of that team to a, a, a championship in 1995. So I suppose the, the general mood in the panel was one of uh, quiet confidence and knowing that we had the measure of, of uh, Probably all the other teams in, in Derry at the time, but Balahi still were looming large on the horizon, and, and we knew that if we were we were going to achieve anything, we would probably have to beat those guys at, at some stage of the year. We had forty players on our panel, so we had enough um, NEA to train in for for fifteen v fifteen, and as well as that, we had a reserve team at that particular stage that probably could have competed with with most senior teams, and that's not an over-exaggeration. So if you factor that all in, um, it, all the time it was it was raising your game and raising your standards. Our expectation uh, of the league and the build-up to the championship was exactly the same, um, where we wanted to win every game we played in, and, and we treated the league with that, uh, that respect. Uh, we went out to try and win every game, and we felt that uh, having a good run in the league and uh, sitting around the top always uh, bared well for the ch championship. So that was definitely uh, the build up was no, no different than any other year. It was great and try and win it, uh, every game. In terms of that year's championship, it was very much a case of uh, we drew Craig Ban in the first round, and Craig Ban had just came up, and we were the first game out in the championship that night. It was a Thursday night game in Dungiven, which wasn't a traditional championship venue for us. And it was really, really wet and windy. And we probably were complacent going into it. And we found ourselves in round a draw at half time. And with 10 minutes to go, we were a point down. And it was looking very ominous. Uh, I kicked in a long 45 and it dropped short. And for some reason, it went into the net. And that gave us a two point cushion. We've seen the game out. But 
and uh, we could easily have been out that year on that night and from that the championship sort of went went smoothly enough and we probably got the scare and that really gave us the, the kick up the backside we needed. It was probably a bit quick in the season for us and we hadn't really hit our rhythm uh, and on a Thursday night in, in Dungiven uh, it was a very tough game against Craig Bann who put us to the pin of our collar and right at the day and embers of the game uh, 45 from Conleith Gilligan floated into the net for us and, and saved our skins that night and we, we managed to squeak through that game we put up a night even before the journey had started after the Craig Ban win in the first round we had two further really tough games against Swatra and then Balan Scream in the semi-final to get through to a county final for a third year in a row against Balahi our nemesis who had pipped us to the two previous county titles Although the Craig Bann game was the most memorable game up until the final, probably the hardest game up to the final was the Banner Screen in the semi final. Uh, we played them at Marfeld and uh, it was uh, nip and tuck the whole way through. I think we managed to beat them by a point. Um, I think they, got, they actually got a man sent off and we're down to 14 men. Uh, we made a real struggle of it, but uh, Banner Screen had a really good team at that time and uh, we were lucky enough and fortunate enough to get through to the final. So again, we, we were where we wanted to be. Um, this was our goal at the start of the year, set out to get the county final and then take it from there. So it was a sort of a now or never uh, situation for, for, for a lot of guys in the team, particularly the older guys in the team who might have thought if they didn't get over this today, um, you know, they might get another chance. This was a game of wills, a game of two juggernaut teams going against each other. Valhae Ulster champions, one of the best teams in Ireland and we were determined that this time was going to be our year. We were unconvincing winners in the semi-final against Ball on the Screen. Um, I think Valhae had swept all before them so um, we probably went into the final um, as well as you can be because we sort of knew there was a big performance in us but um, the final being in Glen uh, probably was a big help because uh, we'd lost the previous final in Celtic Park. The year before that we'd lost the final in Ball on the Screen so um, there was no issue with the venue. Um, the one thing that stands out was the crowd that day. It was Glen before the stand and there was a brick wall around it and you couldn't see any greenery at all for, for the crowd there. Um, you know, and that was, the, that was the biggest memory coming into it. It was just a massive crowd. Uh, I suppose the county final that day, we started off the game really well. We went into a two or three point lead and we kept it to half time. Bly hadn't really started that well that day. and. Then after half time they started reeling us back in and the game was nip and tuck, really and truly, up until maybe the last fifteen minutes and then Balahi started to pull away again. Um they went two points up and I suppose we all thought deja vu, here we go. Balahi being the champions that they were, they put us under the cosh and we were maybe five, ten minutes stuck in our own half, couldn't get out, they were dominating the aerial duels. Uh, from our kickouts, and we talked about this in the build up to the game how we can change momentum of a game to stop ourselves getting caught in our own half. And I think it was Darren Conway maybe won us a kick out, got the ball up the field. I think it ended up going wide, but just to get out of their own half and then to have a spell down in Blahi's half. And I think in that spell, we got a goal, and it was important for us then to you know finish the game off from there to the end. The turning point in the county final for me was obviously the goal. Um, Declan Bateson got the goal, uh, it was 45, I think was kicked in from Conleith and sent it in. I was in, went in to fist it and just as the ball was dropping, I was trying to throw a foot at it. But before I could get anywhere near, Declan uh, dive, dived in and uh, knocked into the net with fists and uh, that was a really, really important uh, score for us in that game. Uh, got us in front and it kept us there. Never for a moment did I ever think that the game was in the bag right until the, the final whistle, uh, when, when the final whistle eventually went. The greatest memory is, is r rushing on the first person I met was Barry McCusker on his knees. We just couldn't believe it would have done it, would have achieved their dream. One and John McLaughlin back, and with me and Barry being the two oldest on the team, it, it just, we knew how much it meant to ourselves, to the, to the great squad we had, and to the whole parish. The biggest memory from that day was just the final whistle and the relief. Um, because you always wondered at that stage whether you were going to be good enough to win a championship or not. And a lot of players at my age and a wee bit older 
hadn't won a championship in '95, so um, it was something very, very special. You know, the, there was only a small wall in Glen, and as soon as the final whistle went, just the pitch was swamped with people, and um, it was it was an amazing feeling. Looking back on my career, uh, I was lucky enough to win five Derry Senior Championships with with Ballon Derry, but that feeling at the end of that county final is the one that stays with me. Because we had been uh, so close against Balahi the previous two years, it was just a, a, an unbelievable rush of relief and emotion and joy and and seeing the, the our supporters streaming onto the pitch. And I, I can remember in particular uh, after that game, my, my mother and father, my, my mother God rest her, and my father Adrian, the, the joy in their faces, it, it was a... It was an absolutely brilliant one. But it was very important because I suppose growing up in Ballinary, the stories of you know Adrian McGuckin and Patrick and Terence had all won championships at, at Ulster clubs in the early 80s. So um, you wanted to sort of value yourself against them people by, by having a championship. So that's pretty much what it was all about. Winning the county title was massive for us as a team and management. Um, after we beaten the last two finals, to be beaten in our final would have been absolutely devastating uh, and to go and to be remembered um, as a team or as part of a team that had been beaten three county finals in a row wouldn't have been a, a great or a nice achievement uh, so getting over the line and that one was absolutely unreal um, and also it uh, gave us a bit of confidence to go on into the Ulster campaign. We were drawn to play the Antrim Championship, which were St Gauls. Now, I suppose we didn't know much about St Gauls, and the celebrations probably after that final went on a wee bit too long. And we went into that game probably complacent. We went down there and we didn't play particularly well, but St Gauls had us in the rack for a long time, and we sort of looked like we'd done enough to win the game. But St Gauls equalised with the last kick of the game with a free kick from about 50 metres, and the replay was in Glen. Uh, we overcome that 8 4 in a wet day in Glen and I suppose we could have been out in that first round of Ulster as well and from there we never looked back. The, the toughest game probably of that season was the St. Two against St. Gauls up in Belfast and then back in Glen in the replay and the first game St. Gauls were an awesome talented outfit they went on to win Ulsters on Ireland after that but that was the first season like ourselves that they'd broken through in Antrim and we, we didn't know a lot about them I was working on a young fella called Sean Kelly who went on to be an Antrim stalwart. Absolute flying machine, spent most of my time trying to chase him down the pitch at Casement Park, a yeah, super footballer. Um, we, we got out of jail that day in the first day against St Gauls with a late goal from Enda Muldoon um, and, and then the replay ground out to win. But they were probably the toughest team that we played that whole season. Enda scored the goal in the Ulster Club final that probably was the difference in the the winning and losing against Mayo Bridge and you know that was just it. It was just incredible. You know, to win an Ulster club, you know, at the start of the year it was all about winning the championship. And then after that, um, everything else was a bonus, I suppose, is the way we looked at it. We had to go to London to play uh, in the quarter final just before Christmas. And uh, after a, a shaky start we actually gave away a penalty. I gave away a penalty uh, in the first two minutes that uh, that Turcanal Gales missed. But after a shaky start, we, we won fairly comfortably, and it was a it was a, a good experience to go away with the lads uh, to London and, and and get that done. And then we could sit back and uh, and look back at our year then and, and enjoy our Christmas and and get ready for the the All Ireland series. So the preparations for the All Ireland semi final were absolutely brilliant. Brian and Eamon and Terence and Desi had got us some terrific challenge games as well as the trainings themselves been fantastic. We were playing the likes of St Mary's who were flying in Sigerson, we were playing Antrim County teams. All the players in the panel got their chance, got the chance to prepare. Um, it was it was really fierce competition. You know, new players would come in that year, Kevin McGuckin and Jarth Bell making their way onto the team, making places their own. Um, so training was absolutely brilliant. That semi-final was in Pierce Park in Longford and it was... We travelled down in the morning but the weather was atrocious. We just were waiting on the phone call to say the match couldn't be played. And we got there, we went out onto the pitch and it was just puddles everywhere, muck puddles. And we assumed the game was going to be called off. We wanted the game off because Rath knew we were a physically big team and 
um, the conditions probably suited them. They pushed for the game to be to be played that day, and um, look, it was great when it did happen. Brian McIver came in absolutely livid. He said the game's going ahead, but um, we were determined, and he instilled in us a determination that we were not going to come off this pitch beaten, and we flew out of the blocks. Inside the first five minutes, we went ahead 1-3 to no score, and um, there was no way back from, for Rathnew from there. Now, the, the rest of the game was a real slog in the heavy conditions, but we played some terrific football and, you know, seen it through to the, to the final whistle. Should the match have been played uh, on, on the day, uh, we were thinking that the match shouldn't have been played. Uh, Rathnew seemed to be happy enough for the match to go ahead. Uh, on the foot conditions was absolutely atrocious. Uh, and the reason I do think it went ahead um, was because the TV cameras were there and they didn't want to postpone it. Um, we're happy enough it went ahead now. Um, uh, the other thing was the great start we got off to. I think we got a penalty uh, near enough from the throw-in or shortly after it anyway. And uh, that set us up and uh, Khalith stuck it in the net and uh, we never looked back from that. Give us a real good platform to, for the game. We thought we might have been the better footballing team than Rath knew and we thought that the conditions would have been a big leveller, uh, you know, and maybe would have suited their, their really rugged, dogged style of play. But anyway, the game went on and to be fair to, to our boys, we, we knuckled in and uh, had, a, had a famous victory that day against a very, very good team. But the, the standout memory is the conditions and uh, for me, uh, I thought Conleith Gilligan was, was superb that day. He seemed to be gliding over the top of the over the top of the water where the rest of us were trudging through it. The turning point in that game uh, probably was uh, some of the blocks we made at the back. I think Ronan Gokhan blocked the ball and uh, Neil McCusker. I think Paul Wilson um, had a massive game that day and the game was won because we were defensively very sound. Another man that I thought was fantastic that day was Niall McCusker at full back. Uh, Niall was a, a, a Trojan of a footballer and an absolutely fantastic full back and, and he was he was excellent that day as well. And the scenes at the final whistle were amazing. This small parish, this little place bound there in an Ireland final, playing an Ireland final on, on, on the 17th of March. Just an amazing feeling, a uh, superb feeling. Preparations for the all Ireland final were probably no different than that had been leading into any other match. Uh, Brian kept everything uh, pretty low key and kept the players well grounded uh, in that sense. Um, but uh, within the parish, uh, things were buzzing. Um, lots of uh, colour around the parish, and anybody you run into was always talking about the final and things they got there. But uh, within the camp itself, it was kept really uh, low key and uh, just. Um, same as normal for any other game we were going to play. The atmosphere and the energy about the place was just incredible. Um, but we deferred to everybody, they just allowed us to get on with it. We, we were able to, you know, just get on with training and preparing for the match itself. Uh, and, and the rest, the committee took care of travel arrangements, where we were staying. Um, you know, all arrangements were, were superbly done. Uh, and it was real credit to them that all we had to concentrate on was players. And, and as players, we were just supporters in the jersey playing for the club. And it meant so much to the whole parish. Everybody who was involved in the parish just knew it was football mad and it was in the blood. And um, the, the excitement and the adrenaline and, and coming towards the game itself, you know, there was a big break those four or five weeks. The primary schools, you know, all the kids were decked out in the colours. It was just uh, an incredible time and, and one I'll never forget. Preparations for the final um, were difficult. It was a very, very wet uh, part of the year and we had only one pitch at that stage, so it was a case of we had a beg and borrow uh, training facilities and I think we went to Arbo and you know the local clubs were very good. I think we went to Derry Lahana an awful lot of the time. Um, so preparations were good. We were due to play the Nemo Rangers and I suppose nobody gave us any sort of a chance in that game because Nemo had Colm Corkery uh, you know, Calvin, Stephen O'Brien, you know, these are players you'd watched in All Ireland finals and Munster finals playing for Cork and um, to get a chance to play against them was massive. We had a, a, a young team, I suppose there was only two players on the team older than me and I was 26 at the time. The majority of our players were between 20 and 25 and uh, the management team done a great job of, of uh, keeping us focused. 
and uh, obviously we were playing Nemo Rangers who were the, the kingpins of, of Ireland at the time and they had a fantastic team with players like Colin Corkery and Stephen O'Brien and the Cronins and the Cavanas, Joe Cavan in particular and uh, you know we were we were looking at these boys like the likes of Corkery and O'Brien. O'Brien had been a, a hero of mine when he was playing for Cork in the late 80s as a as a 19 year old, 18 and 19 year old and uh, so we were <laughs> We went into the game with a, a, a fair degree of intrepidation. Coming on to the Lyon final itself, well, you know what a game against the the royalty of, of club football, playing Nemo Rangers in the final, the team that wanted more than anybody else. We were going to have to prove ourselves. This was something that would you know mark us on the national stage. You know if we could defeat a team that uh, included Colin Corkery, you know the the superstars of the game and and a superstar manager. You know, it would prove that Ballon there was there with the best. The All Ireland final that year was actually in Sample Stadium in Thurles because uh, Crook Park was was being developed, and at the time, I I personally was was gutted that the that the game wasn't in Crook Park. Uh, but you know what? As the years have passed, uh, it's I think it it has actually added something to it that the that the game was a uh, was in Sample Stadium, the uh, where the in Thurles where the where the GA was formed all those years ago. And like most of us had never even been in Thurles, let alone played in it. So um it was then that Brian McIver and Eamon and Terence went to town and you know they used the siege mentality and saying things like uh look everybody wants us beat, they're taking us down here because they don't want us to win and I suppose we as players bought into that because the one thing that Brian had, he was so infectious that when he spoke, you listened and you just wanted to believe him and you knew he had your best interest at heart. So um, we were very well prepared going down there. So I was incredibly nervous, you know, in the build up to the game itself, you know, going out onto the pitch and uh, Thurlis was an amazing cauldron that day. And, you know, uh, it was a huge pitch, that, you know, I could hardly see our cornerbacks or seemed to be so far away. But I can remember sitting in the stand and I would have got nervous before big games but would have always been fairly confident. But this uh, sort of thought process came over me. These, these thoughts started coming into my head, which was strange for me. I was thinking, Jesus, we're playing Nemo Rangers here on live TV on St. Patrick's Day and we could get stuffed here, you know. We, 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 could, we could be on the end of a, a very embarrassing beating here. And um, just for those few minutes, I just couldn't wait to get into the changing room, you know, because I was looking at the conditions and I was looking at our opponents and saying, you know, anything could happen here. And uh, it was probably as nervous as, a, and as, as I'd been before any game. The final itself was a game in which we played against the Breeze in the first half and Nemo took advantage straight away. They, um, they went two or three points up early on and we were struggling to get scores, we were struggling to get enough ball. Um, but whenever Darren Conway had a shot, it dropped in short and Declan Bateson, as he had done that season, had a knack of being in the right place at the right time. He rose above the goalkeeper and Stephen O'Brien and he got a punch to it and went into the net. And Desi Rains, you know, in, in preparations for the whole season, that said to me to follow everything in, whether it was, you know, come off a keeper or off a post, that there was goals to be had by, you know, following every shot in. As luck would have it, Darren's shot dropped short and I managed to get a fist lit and, and it went into the net. And it kept us in the game and it gave us a lead at the time, a lead we held to half time. And straight from the throw in in the second half, I think we won it. Sean Donnelly gave it to Barry McCusker, who with his left foot uh, kicked the ball over from about 45 metres. And um, that really set us up. And we never looked back for the next 15 minutes. Uh, we went three, four points up and it looked like we were going to kick on. And uh, Nemo came back and then we struggled. They pegged us back to a point and it looked like they had the ascendancy and they were going to win the game. Nemo were really in the front foot uh, the second half and then got back within maybe a point again and uh, it looked like they were going to go on to take it, uh, win the game um, so that um, they were playing really, really well and then we get the second goal uh, from Jerk yesterday. All season we worked on, you know, making it difficult for the defenders coming out, tackling, you know, was something that we'd worked on as a forward group. We kicked a long ball in, the Nemo fullback won it. Adrian McGuckin turned him over in the tackle, and suddenly it was a 2v1. Adrian played the ball across to Jared Cassidy, Jared palmed it into the net. That put us four points up with eight or nine minutes to go, and at that stage, 
we just knew that we wouldn't be beat and I think we pegged on another uh, three points and, and Nemo couldn't get back into the game and we were able to hold possession and see the game out and you know that was the standout memory from that game was probably the goal because at that stage you knew that that was enough to win the game and providing we didn't concede two stupid goals uh, we weren't going to be beaten. And when the final whistle went uh, it was awesome just to you know achieve a dream to believe that this dream could actually come true uh, and that we were there as so Ireland champions in 2002 uh, at the top of the tree just the scenes were incredible um, you know with the family you know my wife and my child were down um, you know my parents all my brothers and sisters um, the extended family it was amazing at the end of the game you know to have all those hugs and pats in the back and, and know that you'd achieved something that uh, you know very few people in, in the game ever get to achieve. We were in Kilkenny for the night and um, we'd booked the Honour Hotel for a reception, win, lose or draw, so um, I suppose if you had been beat it would have been a, a real damn squib, but the fact we'd won and all our family and friends and everybody from Ballinary was in the hotel that night, it was just incredible that the cavalcade up uh, to Ballinary the next day and then getting off the bus and carrying the cup over the bridge and maybe a thousand people there to greet us. It was just it was just something you remember very, very fondly. More so now than, than at the time. You probably didn't appreciate it just as much. Um, and in terms of that, it was a massively important season for the club because Ballinary had won Ulster clubs before and they'd come close, but they'd never got over the line to win an All-Ireland. And it was something that, I suppose, looking at players that played in the 81 team, you know, they wanted it for us. You know, they had sown the seeds you know, Patrick McGough and the taking teams at under 12 and Adrian and Kevin Collins at all them teams going right through. Um, I'm sorry if I've left somebody out, but uh, it was as much for them people and the memories of, of them that, that it was just so special. It's strange in that almost every year now when you when you look back, uh, when it comes round to, to St Patrick's Day and you're you're with your mates maybe in a bar watching the all Ireland Club final, it, it, it's just something special that you're... Uh, you can look back and say that God, you know what? It nearly seems surreal, actually, that 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 we've done it. You know that we were able to get there and do it, and uh, maybe tinged with regret a wee bit that we didn't get back again, because we certainly had a team capable of, of getting back again. Uh, and uh, Cross McGlenn beat us in a, a couple of uh, Ulster finals very gnarly, one after a replay, and and one in two thousand and six in, in dreadful conditions at, at Casement where they beat us five three. So we had a team to get back and do it again, but uh, just fell short. But still, to have that uh, to have that medal is is something special. I I would actually argue that uh, an All Ireland Club medal is 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 the is the greatest prize in, in Irish sport because it's a uh, it's there's twenty five hundred clubs in, in in Ireland and to to rise to the top of of all those clubs, and also obviously it's a uh, you have the, the whole dynamic of it being in a team with your brothers, cousins, friends, and they're all like brothers, uh, boys that you grew up with, boys that you played football with from you were knee high, and boys that will always be uh, always be with you, you know. Uh, it's 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 special, it's special, so it's it's fantastic. And, and the memories that I have, of, of, as I said, of my, of my family at the time, uh, my late mother, uh, other friends and relatives and neighbours from around the parish, a lot of them since gone, uh, are, are memories to, to 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 really cherish, you know. And, and it's uh, it was it was certainly one of the most special times in, in, in my life and, and all our lives, I think. It really was a remarkable achievement, and one that still resonates to this day. I hope you enjoyed that story. But we have others. So far this year, we've already looked at the Rossa Camogues, the Lochila Hurlers, and the St. Gauls team of 2010. You can watch those again uh, on our site, but you can also subscribe to our site and see our columnists and analysis and read all the features we've been doing so far during the lockdown. But before I go, I'd like to thank you for your time, thank you for watching, and I hope I'll see you again in a fortnight's time.